In this tutorial, I will show you how to create procedural abstract materials in Blender. So I'm going to show you how to create these 10 procedural abstract materials. And as we're creating these materials, I'll show you some different tips and tricks on how you can change them up to get different abstract designs. And I will also have timestamps in the video description if you'd just like to learn how to create a certain material. And if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then you can purchase these procedural materials on my Gumroad store and you also get access to them on my Patreon page. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs. And if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. All the links are in the description. Now I am going to be using the EV render engine in this tutorial, but you could totally use cycles as well. As you can see, the materials look pretty much exactly the same in both cycles and EV, so you could definitely use the cycles render engine if you want to especially if you want to get a little bit more realistic lighting and some more realistic reflections but I am going to be using blender EV huge thanks to this video's sponsor sketchfab on sketchfab you can upload buy and sell 3d models and assets my favorite feature of sketchfab is that you can upload and preview your own 3d models in your browser sketchfab also has a 3d model store where you can purchase 3d models and assets check out sketchfab with the link below all right, so let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So to create all of these materials, I just pressed Shift A and I added an icosphere. And then when you add the icosphere right down here behind me on the add icosphere settings, I just turn these subdivisions up pretty high to like a five or a six, um, just so that it's a nice smooth sphere. And then I shaded the object smooth. And then I just duplicated those spheres. So I just duplicated them to create 10 of them because I'm gonna be creating 10 different procedural abstract materials. And then also to get some nice bright lighting on on these spheres I added in this sunlight and then right over here on the object data properties I just turned the strength up to 10 and then I also wanted to give a little bit more realistic lighting and also get some nice reflections so right over here on the world I added in this round platform 1k HDR and this is from polyhaven.com so the links in the description if you'd like to download this HDRI and I just clicked right here on this color on the little yellow dot and I just chose environment texture and then I just opened up the HDRI and then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial so if you don't have that enabled just click on edit and open up the preferences and then over there on the add-ons tab you can just search for node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on all right so i'm just going to select the first sphere here and i'm going to click on new and i'm going to call this one blobby dot so a really cool procedural texture for making abstract materials is the magic texture. So that's what we're going to use first. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a magic texture. Let's just drop the magic texture right down here and then I want to be able to preview it. So I'm going to hold down the control and shift key and select the magic texture and that is using the feature from the node wrangler. So it's going to add the viewer node and then it's going to preview different nodes. And you can already see we have a really cool abstract texture here. Now I'll I want to use the object coordinates so with the magic texture selected I'm just going to press Control T that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and then I don't need the mapping so I'll just select it and press X to delete it and let's plug the object now up to the vector so we're using the object coordinates now with this magic texture you can get some really cool different results by turning up the depth so you can see the colors looking different and also the texture is looking a little bit different as well but they all have the little dots there so you can change this all the way up the max is 10 and then you can turn it down to zero so if you turn it down to zero there's actually a really cool texture here kind of like a, a checker pattern um, I'm gonna be turning this up to two um, but you can play around with these you can see one looks pretty different as well I'm gonna use a depth of two and I'm now gonna take the color and I'm gonna put that into the base color and then I'm gonna control shift and select the principal BSDF to preview that and then I also want to give this a little bit of bump so I'm gonna take the color and I'm going to put that into the normal and then we need to convert this to normal data so I'm gonna press shift a we're we're gonna to go to the search here and I'm gonna search for a bump node and let's just drop the bump node right there and then I actually need the color to be going into the height the value on the bump now it is a little bit strong so I'm gonna turn the strength value just down to like a 0.5 so it's less strong you can see we have a really cool abstract texture there now if you want to play around with the colors you could just use the default colors but I want to play around with the colors to make it look better so I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna to go to the search here and just search for a color ramp node and I'm gonna drop the color ramp node right 
right in here between the color and the base color on the principled. So we can now change these colors and that'll actually change the colors on the texture. So on this black one here, I can click on the color here and I'm going to make this like a dark blue, something like that, maybe a little bit less dark, a little bit brighter. And then on the white one right here, I'm going to make this like a red color. So a pretty bright saturated red. That's looking pretty cool. Um, but I also want to make this a little bit more purple. So I'm going to hold down the control key and then click to add another one of those tabs there. And then this one, I'm going to make it like a bright purple and make it a little bit darker. So that's looking pretty cool. And then also if you want to change the scale, you could turn the scale up. I'm going to turn the scale up to like a 10, turn it up to like a 10. Maybe that's a little bit high. Maybe turn it down to like a seven, something like that. So you can see we now have a pretty cool abstract texture. And of course you can continue to play around with the depth to get some different results. And there is a depth of seven that looks really cool. And there's the depth of 10. We have a lot of detail in there. And there's another variation. I'm just going to go with a depth of two. All right, so that's the first one. So I'm going to now do the next one. So let's click on new here. And I'm going to call this one purple crackle. So for this one, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop that down there. And then I'll hold down the control and shift key and select the Voronoi to preview it. Now to give this that crackle effect, I'm going to click on the F1 and I'm going to change that to distance to edge. You can now see we have that really cool crackle look. And then I want to select the Voronoi texture and press Control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping, but I don't need the mapping, so I'll just select it and press X to delete it. And then I'll take the object and put that into the vector. So we're using the object coordinates. Now I want to use this Voronoi texture to distort another texture. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's add a noise texture. And I'm actually going to drop this noise texture in front of the Voronoi. And now you can see we have have this really cool effect here. So let's take the color and we can plug that up to the base color. And then I can control shift and click on the principal to preview it. And then I also want to take the color and put that into the normal to give it some bump. And then I need to convert this to normal data. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node and let's drop the bump node right here. And then I need to take the color and I want to put that into the height and that way it'll convert it to normal data. Now it is a little bit strong right now, so on the bump strength, I'm gonna turn that down to like a 0.4, so it's less strong. Now I don't really like how those colors are. Um, one thing that you could do is press Shift A and search for like a hue saturation value node. You could just drop this in here, and then you could turn up the saturation, and that'll make the colors much more saturated, and then you could also play around with the hue, and that's gonna change the colors. Um, but I'm going to select this and press Control X to delete it. Control X will delete the node, but keep the the wire plugged up. So what I'm going to do instead is press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right here between the color and the base color. Now I'm actually going to drag the black tab over kind of into the center and then I'll drag the white tab all the way over to the other side. And then I can take the black tab and I'm going to change it. So I want it to be purple. I think purple looks really cool for this procedural material. So I'm going to make it kind of a dark saturated purple color, kind of blue. And then also on the noise texture, I'm going to turn the detail down and that way there's going to be less detail detail, you can kind of see there's lots of little lines, but if I turn that detail down, now there's less of those lines. That's looking pretty cool. And then we can also play around with these values. So you can kind of drag them around if you want to change those colors. I'm actually going to take this color and I'm going to make it a little bit more purple and then I'm going to make it pretty dark. And then you can also play around with the scale value on the noise texture. And you can see if you change this, it's going to look a lot different. You could also turn it way down if you want it to just look like that, or you could turn it up and it's going to have lots more details in there. I'm going to go with a value of like a six. And then if you want to change the size of those crackly pieces, you could change the scale right here on the Voronoi. So you can make that much smaller or you could make it really big, uh, make those pieces really big like that. I'm just going to leave it at five. All right. And that is it for the purple crackle. So let's do the next material. So I'm just going to select another sphere and let's click on new. And I'm going to rename this one to blue sky. All right. Now for this one, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to again add a Voronoi texture. Let's add a Voronoi texture right here. And then I want to select the Voronoi and press control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now we don't need the mapping. So I'll just select it and press X to delete it. And then I want to use the object coordinates. So let's put the object into the vector. And then I'm also going to hold down the control and shift key and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. Now I want to use a noise texture to distort the Voronoi texture. So I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's put the noise texture right here. So the object is going to go through the vector. So now it's going to distort that Voronoi texture. And then I'm going to turn the scale up. So I'll turn the scale up to maybe like a seven on the noise texture. And I do want it to have a little bit more detail. So I'll turn the detail up to like a three. 
And then I also want to turn the scale on the Voronoi down. So I'm going to turn the Voronoi down maybe to just like a 1.5. So I now want this to be going into the normal and then also the color. So let's take the distance. We're going to put that into the base color. And then we'll also take the distance and we're going to put that into the normal. And then I can control shift and select the principle to preview that. Now we need to convert this to normal data. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a bump node. And let's just drop the bump node right here. So we're going to plug the distance into the height value and then that's going to give it some bump and then it is a little bit strong right now so i'm going to turn the strength value down to just like a 0.5 and then on this voronoi texture i'm going to click on the f1 and i'm going to change that to distance to edge so now you can see we have much more texture in there if i control shift and select that you can see that it's distorting that and adding all those dark colors in there so let's control shift and select the principled bsdf and i want to change the colors so i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right in here here, and then we can change the colors. So on this black tab right here, I'm going to make this a bright color and then I'm going to make it like a blue color. And then I want to be able to see more of that white. So I'm going to drag the white tab over uh, pretty far so that there's a lot more of that white. And then this blue color, I think I'll make this a little bit more light. And then I want to add another blue color. So I'm going to hold down the control key and then click here. And that's going to add another tab. And then for this color, I'm going to make it blue as well but it's going to be a bit brighter and i'll bring it over pretty close something like that and then you can change the scale values so i'm going to change the scale value on the voronoi you can see that's going to look different you can also change the randomness and that's going to change how it looks and then you can also play around with the scale of the noise texture that'll change that scale so if you want to make it bigger or smaller you could change that and if you want to add a lot more detail you could also turn up this detail level so there's a lot more detail and you could also play around with the roughness value if you want to add more roughness as well and you could change the distortion as well if you want to distort that more and then i also want this material to be a little bit more shiny so i'm going to turn the roughness to just like a 0.3 so it's a bit more shiny all right so that is it for the blue sky let's do the next one so i'm going to click on new and then i'm going to change this one to metal swirl so for this metal swirl, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a wave texture. Let's drop the wave texture right here. And then with the wave texture selected, I'm going to press control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I just want to use the object coordinates. So I'm going to select the mapping and press X to delete it. And let's plug the object up to the vector on that wave texture. And then I'm going to control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. Now I'm going to change the bands over to rings instead. And then I also want to change it from X X to the Z value. And then I want to click on the sign and I instead want to change that to saw. And then let's play around with some of these values to kind of warp it. So I'm going to change the scale down. I'm just going to change the scale down to like a four. And then we can turn the distortion up and that is going to distort it and add a really cool look. So I find that like a 22 looks pretty good. That looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to take the detail roughness and I'm going to turn that down all the way down to zero. All right, so let's take the color and we're gonna put that into the base color. And then I can control shift and select the principal BSDF. And then I also wanna take the color and I wanna put that into the normal to give it some bump, but then I wanna press shift A and I'm gonna to go to the search here and I'm gonna search for a bump node because I need to convert this to normal data. So I'll put the bump right in there and then I will take the color and put that into the height and that is going to give it some bump. Now I want this to look metallic. So I'm gonna take the metallic value right here and turn that all the way up to one. And then I do want it to be a bit more shiny, so I'm going to turn the roughness down to like a 0.35 so it's a bit more shiny. And then also you can see that this bump is really strong and it's kind of making it look really lumpy. So I'm going to turn the strength down to just like a 0.3 and that's looking much better. All right, so that's really cool. You could leave it like that if you want to, but I want to add some blue into this texture. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right in here. And then I actually want to switch these. So I'm going to bring this over and bring the white tab over here. And I'm going to bring the black tab just to kind of about here. And then you can make this whatever color you want. So you could turn this up to white and then just change the colors. So you can see it actually looks pretty cool with a lot of different colors. I think that a very dark, strong blue color looks really nice, but you could change this to whatever colors you want. And of course, you could add more colors by holding down the control key and clicking, and then you could change this to whatever color you want. So let me just change this to red. That looks pretty cool as well. I could actually turn this metallic value all the way down to zero so it looks less metallic, and that almost looks like some sort of candy material. I'm going to turn the metallic all the way back to one 
though. And then I will take this and click on the minus here and that's gonna get rid of that one. I like this blue color like that. And if you wanted to animate this, a cool value that you could use to animate this is the phase offset. So if you animated the phase offset, you can see that it's just going to move those waves. All right, so that is it for the metal swirl. Let's do the next one. So I'm gonna click on the next sphere. Let's click on new and I'm gonna call this one purple blobs. So for this one, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm going to use a Voronoi texture as the base texture. So let's add this here and then I'm going to select the Voronoi and I'm gonna press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and then I'll just delete the mapping. So I'll select the mapping and press X to delete it and I wanna use the object coordinate. So I'll plug the object into the vector and then I can hold down the control and shift key and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. Now I'm gonna click on the F1 and I'm gonna change this to smooth F1. And you can see now those dots are very smooth. And then I wanna play around with the colors. So I'm gonna press shift A. Let's go to the search here and add a color ramp. Let's just drop the color ramp right here. And then I can plug the color and we're gonna put that into the base color. And then I will control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview that. So I'm gonna select the black tab and then I'm going to make it fully white. So let's make that fully white. And then on this one right here, I'm gonna drag this one over and I'm gonna make this like a very strong blue color and make it kind of dark. And then also right here on the RGB, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna change this to HSL. And when you do that, now you can see that that blue color kind of gets pink before it goes to white. So that's really cool. And now there's a little bit of pink in there before it turns white. And then I also want to add another dark blue color. So I'm going to hold down the control key and then click right there. And that's going to add another tab. And let's just make this a darker color. So it's kind of a darker blue. All right. So that's looking really cool. Now I want to give it some bump. So I'm actually going to use the color. So I'm going to put the color into the normal. And that way this color is going to affect the bump instead of just the normal distance from the Voronoi. So I'm now going to press shift A. I'm gonna to go to the search here and I'm gonna search for a bump node because we need to convert this to normal data. So just add a bump node and we're just gonna stick the bump node right in here. So the color is actually gonna go into the height the value and then the normal can go into the normal. And you can see that those dots are kind of popping out but I want them to go back in instead. So I'm gonna click on the invert button and that way they're gonna go back in. So then you can play around with these if you want to. So you can now see where those white parts are, they kind of go back in and that's looking pretty cool. So you can play around with this if you want to change those dots. And then because we have this slightly darker blue, you can see that that is going to affect the bump just a little as well. And then I do want this to be pretty shiny. So I'm going to turn the roughness way down to just like a 0.3. So that's more shiny. And that is looking really cool. And then if you want to add more dots, you could turn the scale up. So I'm going to turn the scale up to like a six on the Voronoi texture so that there's more of those dots. And then there are some other values you could play around with. So this one is set to smooth F1. But if you turn down the smoothness value, it's going to be less and less smooth. And if you turn that way down. Now you can see that there are some little chunks there. I'm going to turn that smooth this value up. You could just turn it up a little bit. That looks pretty cool, but I'm going to turn it all the way up to one. And then if you want those dots to be less random, you could turn down the randomness. And now those dots are going to be much more straight towards each other. Um, but I like it to look very random. So I'll keep that at one. All right. So that is it for the purple blobs material. So let's go ahead and do the next one. So I'm going to click on this sphere right here and let's click on new and I can call this one green swirls. So for this one, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's click on the noise texture and drop it here. And then I'm going to select the noise texture and press control T. And that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I don't need the mapping. So I'll just press X to delete it. And let's take the object and put that into the vector so we can use the object coordinates. And then I'm also going to hold down the control and shift key and select the noise texture to preview it. Now I want to distort this noise texture. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a musgrave texture. And we're going to drop this musgrave texture right in here. So it's going to go through the vector. And so it's going to distort it. And now you can see we have this really cool effect here. And then on the scale here, I'm just going to turn this down to like a 1.5 on the Musgrave. And then I'm also going to turn the dimension all the way down to zero as well. And then I can turn the scale up here on the noise texture. So I'm going to turn this up to like a 12. And then I'll also turn the detail all the way down to zero because I don't want very much detail. You could turn up the detail if you want to, and it's going to add a bunch more little lines, but I don't really want that. So I'm going to turn the detail down to zero zero. All right, so now let's play around with the colors. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right here. 
kind of bring this out of the way. So then on this first black tab right here, I'm gonna make this bright and then make it kind of like a blue color, like a bright blue color. That's looking pretty cool. Let's click on the white one here. And for the white one, I'm gonna make this a bright green color. And that's looking really cool. You can of course change these colors to whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna now hold down the control key and click right here to place another tab. And then for this one, I'm gonna make it kind of a darker blue. Something like that is pretty cool. You could of course change these colors to whatever you want, get something that looks cool. I think blue and green looks really nice for this shader. So now let's take the color and we're gonna put that into the base color and then I can control shift and select the principle to preview that. And that is looking really cool. Now let's give it some bump. So I'm gonna take the color and we're gonna put that into the normal. And then to convert this to normal data, let's press shift A. We need to search for a bump node and we're going to drop the bump node right in here and that way it'll convert this color data to normal data and then we actually need to take this and put this into the height value so there we go now we're getting lots of bump now it is a bit strong right now so i'm going to turn the strength value just down to like a 0.4 so that's less strong and that is looking super cool and also i think that turning the roughness down a bit looks cool as well now i actually want to take this color here on the color ramp and i want that to affect the roughness so let's take the color and we're going to put that into the roughness and then I want to play around with that even more and I want to have more control over those colors so I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right in here between the color and the roughness so now I can play around with these black and white colors and that's going to change the roughness so I actually want to switch these colors so I'm just gonna drag the white over and drag the black over and then I can play around with this black value so you can see if I drag it up here it's a bit more rough but then if I drag it a bit closer it's more shiny and then of course you can play Play around with all these values here so if you want to distort that more you could turn up the distortion on the noise texture you could also turn up the dimension on the musgrave texture you can see that's going to kind of make everything a little bit bigger and then if you want to add a lot more detail and add a lot more of those swirls you could turn the detail up on the musgrave texture and you can see that's going to add tons of detail in there so that's really cool all right so that is it for that texture so let's do the next one so I'm going to click on this sphere right here. Let's click on new and I'm going to call this one chunky puzzle. So I'll press shift a and I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop the Voronoi texture down here and then I'm going to select the Voronoi texture and I'll press control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and I don't need the mapping so I can select it and press X to delete it. And then I can plug the object into the vector so that we can use the object coordinates. And then I will control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. Now for this one right here, I'm going to click on the F1 and I'm going to change this to distance to edge and now you can see we have those cool little cracks in there and then I want to distort this so I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture and we're going to use this noise texture to distort the Voronoi texture so I'll put the noise texture right in here and then I'm going to turn the detail all the way down to two because I don't want very much of that detail and now you can see those pieces are more chunky and then I will also turn the scale on the Voronoi down to like a three all right now I want to be able to control those colors so I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right here so on the colors here I'm gonna take the black tab and I'm gonna turn that up a little bit and then I'm gonna make it a red color so it's kind of gonna be a very dark red and let's make that a little bit more towards the red and then I'm also gonna click on the white tab and this one I'm gonna make a bright red so I'll turn it to red and make it pretty bright and then I can also drag the red tab over to show more of that red and I think I will drag the dark red up a little bit and let's make that dark red a little bit brighter let's make it a little bit brighter and something like that and then let's take the color we're going to put that into the base color and then i can control shift and select the principle to preview that now i also want to give this some bump you can see it's kind of smooth right now so i'm going to take the distance from the voronoi and i'm going to plug that into the normal and then to convert this to normal data so it, it can actually be bumpy i'm going to press shift a and let's search for a bump node and i'm going to drop the bump node right in here and then we actually want the distance to be going into the height not the normal and that's going to give it some bump now it's a bit too strong right now you can see that's really strong so i'll turn the strength value down to just like a 0.3 and that is looking very cool and something else you could do is turn up the detail and if you turn the detail way up you can see now that kind of looks like a planet or it looks more like dirt or something more natural or organic i'm going to turn the detail down but you could definitely turn that up if you wanted to make some sort of planet or dirt or rock and that is it for that material so i'm going to go over here to the next 
next one. Let's click on new and I'm going to rename this one to red swiggle. So for this one, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a wave texture. So the wave texture is going to be the base texture and then let's select the wave texture and I'm going to press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I don't need the mapping so I can click on the mapping and press X to delete it. Let's take the object and put that into the vector so that we can use the object coordinates. And then I can control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. Now I'm going to turn the scale down to like a 2.5. And then I also want to click on the bands and I'm going to change that to rings. And then I don't want to use the X. I want to instead use the Y. And then I'm going to click on sign and I'm going to instead change that to triangle. And then let's turn this distortion value up and that's going to make it look really cool. And I like to use a distortion value of something like 22. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm also going to turn the detail roughness all the way up to one. So now let's play around with those colors. So I'm going to press shift day and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to add a color ramp. Let's just drop the color right in here and then I'm going to click on a black tab and I'm going to make this a yellow color so I'm going to add a lot of warm colors so this one's going to be yellow I'll click on the white one and this one is going to be a red color so another really warm color and then I'll hold down the control key and click right there to add another tab and this one I'm going to make a orange color and then let's plug the color into the base color and I can control shift and select the principal to preview that now I want to plug the color into the normal to give it some bump so let's plug the color into the normal and then to actually convert this to a normal data. I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and search for a bump node and let's drop the bump node right here. And then I want to plug the color into the height and that way it's going to be nice and bumpy. Now it's a bit too strong right now. So I'm going to turn the strength value to like a 0.5. So it is less bumpy, but that's looking pretty cool. And then I want to make this material pretty smooth. So I'm going to turn the roughness value to like a 0.2 and that way it's much more shiny. And that is it for that red swiggle material. So let's do the next one. So I'm going to click on this one here let's click on new and this one I'm gonna call green raindrops so I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna go to the search here and I'm gonna use a wave texture so let's click on the wave texture drop it down here and then I'm gonna select the wave texture and press control T that's gonna add the texture coordinate and mapping but I don't need the mapping so I can select it and press X to delete it and then let's plug the object up to the vector to use the object coordinates and then I can control shift and select the wave texture to preview it now I want to use a texture to distort the wave texture so to do that that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. So I'll click on the Voronoi and I'm just going to drop it right in here. And then I want to take the distance and I want to plug the distance into the vector on the wave texture. And now you can see that we have all those circular dots there. And then I want to click on the F1 and I instead want to use smooth F1. And that way those edges are going to be smooth. As you can now see, there's still all those little circles there, but there's not those sharp areas. So they're kind of smooth and blend together. And then I'm going to turn the scale on the Voronoi texture down to like like a two. And then on the wave texture, I'm going to turn the scale to like a two. So that is smaller. And then I'm going to turn the distortion way up. So I'm going to turn the distortion up to like a 22 so that it is much more distorted. And then I want to turn the detail roughness down. So I'm going to turn that down to like a 0.3. So let's now take the color and we're going to put that into the base color. And then I can control shift and click on the principal to preview that. And then I want to change the colors. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right in here so we can play around with the color ramp to change those colors. So I'm going to click on the black tab and I'm going to make that a purple color. Let's make that kind of a purpley color like that. And then on the white tab right here, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to make that a bright green color. And then I want to add a blue color in here because I think blue looks pretty cool. So I'm going to hold down the control key and click right there to add another tab. And then this one, I'm going to have kind of a bright blue color, not super bright, but something like that. And then I also want to plug the color into the normal to give it some bump. So let's take the color. We're going to put that into the normal and then to convert this to normal data, I'm going to press shift A and let's search for a bump node. And then I I can drop the bump node right in here and then we actually want the color to be going into the height value so that that'll be converted to normal data. Now it's kind of strong right now, so I'm going to turn the strength value down to like a 0.5 so it's less strong. And then you could also turn the roughness down. I'm going to turn the roughness down to like a 0.3 so it's a bit more shiny. So now there are a bunch of things you can play around with with the Voronoi and the wave. So you could turn the scale up and then that way there's going to be more of those rings on the wave texture. You could also turn the scale up here on the Voronoi. And if you turn the scale up on the Voronoi, there's going to be more of those circles. 
circles. Now you could also play around with the smoothness. So if you turn the smoothness all the way down, you can see there are those sharp bits right there and I don't really like that. So you could just turn the smoothness up a little bit and that's just gonna blend those together just a little. So if you like how that looks, that looks really cool. Um, or you could turn the smoothness up more. And then you could also play around with the randomness. And if you turn the randomness down, then those circles are gonna be much more straight to each other. I am gonna turn the randomness up to one though so it's very random. And then you can also play around with this detail roughness on the wave texture and that's gonna change it quite a bit. And then you can use the phase offset just to move those waves on the wave texture. And also if you wanted to animate this, this would be a cool value to animate. And also the distortion value on the wave texture will make it look a lot different as well. So you could turn this distortion value way down and there's gonna be very little detail or you could turn this distortion up and there's gonna be a lot more rings. And that is it for the green raindrops material. So let's click on this one here, the last one, and I'm gonna make the last material. So let's click on new here to add a new material and I'm gonna change this name to orange metal. So let's press shift A and I'm gonna to go to the search here and I'm gonna start by adding a Musgrave texture. Let's drop the Musgrave texture right down here and then I can control shift and select it to preview it. Now also with it selected, I'm gonna press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I wanna take the object and I'm gonna put that into the vector on the Musgrave texture and then I don't need the mapping so I can press X to delete it. And then right here, I'm gonna click on this setting here and I'm gonna change it to multi-fractal. And then let's take the scale and I'm gonna turn that down to like a four. And then we can also turn the detail up. So I'm gonna turn the detail up to like a six. And then I wanna turn the dimension down. So I'm gonna turn the dimension to like a 0.4. And then I want this to affect the bump. So I'm gonna take the height here and I'm gonna plug that into the normal to give it some bump. Now I wanna convert this to normal data. So I'm gonna press shift A. I'm gonna to go to the search here and I'm gonna search for a bump node to convert that to normal data. So I'll put this right in here, put the bump node right in between the height and the normal. And then let's take the height and I'm gonna put that into the height value of the bump. And then if I control shift and select the principle to preview that, you can see once it loads up, it's nice and bumpy. Now I don't want it to be bumpy all over the place. I just want it to be bumpy here and there. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and I'm gonna drop it right here. So now I can take this black tab and I'm going to turn it up and make it kind of like a darker gray. And then I'm gonna click on this white tab here and I'm just gonna make this like a whiter gray. And then if you drag this darker gray over, it's going to change where that's bumpy. So if you want to make it a bit more smooth in some areas, you could drag that over. And then I want this to look like metal. So right over here on the principal BSDF, I'm gonna turn the metallic value all the way up to one. So it is treated as a metallic material. And then I also wanna play around with the roughness so you could just change the roughness value right here, but I'm gonna take the color from this color ramp and I'm gonna put that into the roughness value. All right, now I also want to give this some more bump just all over the place. So I'm gonna press shift A and let's search for a noise texture. Click on the noise texture and drop it right down here. And then I can take the object and I'm gonna put the object into the vector of the noise texture. And then I'm also gonna take the scale value and just turn that down to like a three. All right, so I want the noise texture to affect the normal as well. So I'm just gonna select this bump node and I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate it and drop it right here and then I can take the factor and I want to put the factor into the height of the bump so it'll actually convert it to normal data and then I'm going to take the normal and I'm going to put the normal into the normal value of the bump so we're mixing two bump maps together and then that's the effect that we're getting now the bump maps are really strong so I'm going to turn the strength value to just like a 0.2 on both of these bump maps so a 0.2 and also the bump here the bump strength to like a 0.2 so it's less strong and then I want to add some orange colors so let's take the color and we're going to put that into the base color. Now to add the orange colors, I'm gonna press Shift A and let's search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right in here. And then let's actually switch these colors because where it's white, I want that to be a little bit more bumpy. And then you can see where it's black, I want that to be smooth. But I'm now gonna click on the black here and I'm gonna make that very bright and I'm gonna make it an orangey color. So now you can see where it's orange, it's going to be more smooth. And then I can also drag these together to make it more contrasty. And I think I might make this orange a little bit more red. And then you can also play around with the scale on the Musgrave texture. So I think I'm gonna turn the scale down to like a three. All right, and then press Control S to make sure you save your Blender file. And this is it for the 10 procedural abstract materials. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. And I hope this gave you also some ideas on how to create your own abstract procedural materials. And if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, you can also purchase these procedural materials on my Gumroad store. And you also get access to my procedural materials on my 
my Patreon page. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more procedural materials and to watch more procedural material tutorials, you can watch my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. I'll have all the links in the video description. So I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.